Look with me is Lauren Fix, the car coach, leading analyst of the auto industry. Now, you were listening to Carlos Ghosn. Um, so, when he says turn the Ghosn page, I mean, is the alliance in trouble because it doesn't have the glue of Carlos Ghosn? There's a lot of pressures coming on from the French government to take over the Japanese car company. Of course, Nissan doesn't want that, and that's part of what caused the pressures of Carlos going to be put into this position. And, and the alliance is, is really in a lot of trouble. Uh, for all three of them to survive, they have to work together, and I, I just don't see the, the, the want for them to work together. Uh, for it comes to even something as simple as electric cars, they came out with the Nissan Leaf, and it's sort of, that's it. I mean, where other car companies are pushing toward electrification, we're not seeing those kind of innovations. And the reason for that is it comes down to dollars and cents. And they have to work together. That's the only way the three are going to survive. Otherwise, it's going to fall apart. Right, but Carlos Ghosn says he wasn't a dictator, but by the same token, you can't run this alliance by, uh, by agreement. If somebody has to lead, somebody has to have strategic direction. Is that what he gave that is, he, that is not there now? Uh, Carlos Ghosn is an innovator, he's a fixer, he's the one that put this all together, he's an entrepreneur, and the way he thinks was correct. He, you have to have someone who's the leader of the three who can communicate with all three companies so that you get the best from everyone. And without that, all they're doing is fighting. The infighting is hurting them all financially, and you're seeing that in the sales and the drop in profits. So what do they do? Because the, the plan that Ghosn had was for a holding company, very similar to the airlines, actually, when they merge. You have a holding company, and then you have, you have the two individual entities. In this case, it will be a holding company and Renault and Nissan and Mitsubishi. But they didn't want that. And in fact, according to Carlos Ghosn, they so badly didn't want it, they colluded with the prosecutors to get rid of him. Right, that's exactly what it is. It's a coup. I've been saying that since the beginning. You and I have been talking since this first came down in 2018. I believe it was a coup. They didn't want... Uh, Carlos Ghosn got pressure from the French government at the time. It was uh, Macron who was working uh, on the financial side. He was a financial minister, and they wanted the pressure of getting Renault to own more of Nissan. And overnight, he owned 43.4%. Uh, the, the French government owned of Nissan, and that was a problem because there was voting power from Renault on Nissan, but Nissan had no voting power with Renault, and that's where problems got, things went upside down. So it's not a fair alliance where everybody kind of works together. It's uneven, and then without having a leader, someone who can position to communicate, to be a liaison to each company, it's just going to fall apart. And that's not good because each car company needs to align themselves with some car company because the only way you can survive in today's right. world is to share technology, share platforms, and I'm not seeing that happening, not with the way things are right now. Lauren, good to see you. Lauren Fox joining me. Uh,